It's like having a smart waiter who can tell you about all the specials and even describe new dishes as they are added. It's for when you need the agent to really dig in and break down complex problems and think step by step, almost like a human working through a very challenging problem. I make sure and not overuse it for my users to have a bad experience. Welcome back to Demystifying Copilot Studio, where we bring in our enthusiastic community members to ask their all important questions directly to our product team. Today, in the question seat, we've got Seb Sieber, one of our awesome MVPs and also Director for Technology, an incredibly cool job title. And here answering questions, Ellie Ray, one of our senior product managers here at Microsoft. So Seb, tell us, what do you want to know? Yeah, thank you so much, Lulia, for having me today. And thank you, Ellie, for taking the time uh, to answer this question. So um, with the recent news about Model Context Protocol, um, what is the difference between using an MCP server and using a standard connector? So why would I use one versus the other? Yeah, thank you, Lydia. And thank you, Seb. What a great question. And this actually comes up a lot. And the difference is actually pretty intuitive when you zoom out and think in terms of jobs to be done. And I love to think in analogies. So here's one that helps. Think of a standard API as ordering from a fixed menu at a restaurant. You know exactly what's available, but if you want something new, the menu has to be updated. Developers have to write a specific code for each API and update it whenever things change. However, with an MCP server, it's, it's like having a smart waiter who can tell you about all the specials and even describe new dishes as they are added. But just like in any restaurant, the chef still has to cook the food and the tools, the features that exist but the API can discover and use them more flexibly without needing the manual to be rewritten each time. So if you're building a traditional app that needs speed and predictability, APIs are great. But if you want an agent that can flexibly interact with lots of tools on the fly and adapt on the fly, MCP servers are the way to go. Oh, that's, thank you, Ellie. That's a really good comparison. I, I'm, I'm so close to get hungry. <laughs> So on, on to the next question maybe here. So um, in, in the future look, we are anticipating that most people will go through multiple agents to get their, their jobs done or even to navigate just a single process of their work. So can you describe maybe your vision for how a human worker will engage with multiple agents while keeping it simple and minimize the task switching? Mm. Yeah, this is such an important question. Because the power of agents really shines, not when you have one super agent doing everything, but when you have a team of specialists working together behind the scenes. So here's the thing. With a human on the other end, it cannot feel like they're juggling multiple agents. Our vision is that it should feel like talking to one intelligent teammate, even if that one teammate is quietly coordinating with others on your behalf. So rather than making the user think, hey, which agent should I go for this? The experience should really be intent first. A seller might say, help me get this deal across the line. And that one prompt can spin up a research agent, a pricing agent, a quote generation agent, all without the users needing to orchestrate it themselves. We call this agent orchestration with context continuity. And this means that agent pass insights to each other so the humans don't have to repeat it themselves. You don't have to re-upload the same file or re-explain the same account history. The right data is shared across the agents securely and intelligently. And whenever the agents need to interact with other system of records, they can also seamlessly do so using MCP servers for other system of records. And more importantly, the users stay in control. Think of it like a conductor in front of an orchestra. You're directing the outcome, but the instruments are playing in sync without you micromanaging every single note. So we're designing Copilot Studio in a way that people don't even notice there are multiple agents involved. They just see one simple, helpful experience that adapts to whatever they're trying to get done. 
Oh, that that's really nice. That really looks like a great feature I had for all of us to really just minimize um, all over a all over the place. So one more question here. Um, so when someone turns on the new deep reasoning feature in Copilot Studio, um, it is necessary to tell the agent when to use the reasoning through the instructions. And so maybe because these instructions are very powerful, what are some do's and don'ts from your side for these instructions? Yeah, great question. Uh, one thing I would love to emphasize is that when you use Copilot Studio with advanced models like GPT-40, there's already a baseline reasoning happening. These models are already pretty good at uh, understanding questions and providing thoughtful answers. But there is a difference between this building reasoning and deep reasoning. So deep reasoning is like turning on the high beam. It's for when you need the agent to really dig in and break down complex problems and think step by step, almost like a human working through a very challenging problem. And Copilot Studio dynamically determines when to use this deeper level of analysis automatically based on how tricky the task is. However, if you really want to make sure that the agent uses its full deep reasoning capability for a specific step, you can simply add the keyword reason in your instructions. And that's your way of telling the agent, hey, slow down and really think through this problem. And back to your second part of the question, what are some do's and don'ts? So the first do that I would recommend is be very explicit. Use the word reason in your instructions for any step when you want the agent to apply these deep reasoning. For example, you might want to say, use reason to determine the best approach for this complex scenario. And this tells the agent to kick in its deep analysis mode for that specific task. However, target complexity. You want to reserve deep reasoning for steps that truly require logical analysis, problem solving, or nuanced decision making, like scientific research, scenario analysis, or interpreting unstructured data. And like any developers and good engineering practice, test it thoroughly. After you add deep reasoning to your instructions, run tests with real world scenarios to make sure that the agent's response are accurate and insightful. Adjust your instructions based on what you see. And here are some don'ts. Don't overuse it. Avoid tagging every single step with the word reason. And that's because deep reasoning can really slow down the response time. So only use it when it adds real value. Otherwise, your agents are going to seem sluggish and less efficient. And secondly, don't be vague. Don't give general instructions like, oh, think about this. Uh, analyze it carefully. Those won't trigger deep reasoning. Copilot Studio specifically looks for a keyword reason in the instruction. And then lastly, don't forget the user experience. Because if deep reasoning makes the answer really slow, warn users and set expectations so they know the response might take some time. So in short, be very strategic about using the word reason and target it for complex, high-value steps and keep your instructions clear and focused and always balance between accuracy and performance. And that way, you'll get the most out of deep reasoning in Copilot Studio without slowing down your agent or overwhelming it with unnecessary complexity. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alisa. I want to use deep reasoning uh, for my next agent, but I, not, I make sure I not overuse it for my users to have a bad experience. Thank you so much for these answers. Thank you for the questions. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you so much, both of you. This was a great episode. Seb, I love your questions. And Ellie, those analogies were so helpful. They really grounded it for me, brought it to life. And I'm confident these answers are going to be so useful for our community. Now, if you're a member of our community and you want to explore Copilot Studio a little bit more, I have a few places you can head. Firstly, the Power Platform community has a LinkedIn channel, a YouTube channel, and a community site. Second, I'd love you to go and check out our brand new agent creator site. And finally, if you want to try out Copilot Studio for yourself, go to aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio. We can't wait to see you there. Thanks, everybody.